This video summarises the systematic review led by Josh Naunton entitled Effectiveness of Progressive and Resisted and Non-Progressive or Non-Resisted Exercise in Rotator Cuff Related Shoulder Pain. Shoulder pain is a common musculoskeletal complaint. Rotator cuff related pain is the predominant diagnosis. Clinical guidelines recommend exercise for rotator cuff related pain, but make no distinction about the type of exercise prescribed. The aim of this review was to estimate the average effect of resisted and progressive exercise and non-resisted or non-progressive exercise, both compared to no treatment or placebo. Sensitive searches were performed in five databases and two clinical trial registries. Randomised controlled trials of exercise compared to no treatment or placebo in participants aged over 16 with a primary complaint of rotator cuff related pain of any duration were included. Exercise was classified as resisted and progressive or non-resisted or non-progressive. Resisted and progressive exercise programs explicitly stated how resistance was applied and that there was progression of the volume or load or both over time. Non-resisted or non-progressive exercise programs explicitly stated that load was not applied or not progressed or both. The primary outcome was a composite measure of pain and function measured on any shoulder specific scale. This was converted to a 0 to 100 point scale, with 0 being no pain or dysfunction. Secondary outcomes were pain and adverse events. Overall, with activity and at rest pain were recorded. Again, these were converted to a 0 to 100 point scale, with 0 being no pain. Medium term follow up, that is 6 weeks to 6 months, was used as the primary time point. Two reviewers independently identified trials for inclusion and extracted data. Discrepancies were resolved through discussion or by arbitration from a third reviewer. The Cochrane Risk of Bias tool was used to evaluate trial quality, with all quality ratings extracted from a recent Cochrane review. Confidence in the evidence was determined using the Grading of Recommendations Assessment, Development and Evaluation, or GRADE, approach. Random effects meta-analysis was used to calculate the mean between group difference and 95% confidence interval for the composite measure of pain and function and the pain-related secondary outcomes. Relative risk and 95% confidence intervals were calculated for adverse events. Seven trials involving 468 participants were included in the analyses. Four trials involving 271 participants evaluated resisted and progressive exercise, while three trials involving 197 participants evaluated non-resisted or non-progressive exercise. The mean age of participants was between 47 and 61 years, and trials largely included males. Baseline pain and function ranged from 33 to 50 out of 100. Compared to no treatment or placebo, resisted and progressive exercise reduced all pain and function outcomes. The mean between group difference for composite pain and function was 15 points, with a 95% confidence interval of 9 to 21. Overall pain mean difference was 11 points, with a confidence interval of 6 to 16. Pain with activity mean difference was 25 points, with a confidence interval of 14 to 36. And pain at rest mean difference was 23 points, with a confidence interval of 14 to 32. Compared to no treatment or placebo, no effect was observed for non-resisted or non-progressive exercise for all pain and function outcomes. The mean between group difference for composite pain and function was 4 points, with a 95% confidence interval of minus 2 to 9. The mean difference for overall pain was 3 points, with a confidence interval of minus 1 to 8. The mean difference for pain with activity was 3 points, with a confidence interval of minus 5 to 12. And the mean difference for pain at rest was 2 points, with a confidence interval of minus 7 to 10. The effect on adverse events is unclear for resisted and progressive exercise as no trials reported whether any adverse events occurred. Adverse events, a short-term increase in pain, may be higher with non-resisted or non-progressive exercise compared with placebo. 
with a risk ratio of 3.77 and a 95% confidence interval of 1.49 to 9.54. All results were classified as low certainty. Resisted and progressive exercise provides an uncertain clinically meaningful improvement in pain and function compared to no treatment or placebo among people with rotator cuff related pain. In contrast, there is low certainty evidence of no benefit on pain and function with non-resisted or non-progressive exercise.